Well, hello. Via the Daily Mail, six former Met police officers charged for sending grossly offensive WhatsApp messages, including racist remarks about the Sussexes and migrants being sent to Rwanda. If you were a part of my TikTok live, then you know I said I wasn't going to do a video about this, only because I had talked about the situation on the live. But as I was doing a little bit of research, I found some interesting things that popped up. So let's take a look. This isn't the first case or story regarding the Metropolitan Police and them being found institutionally racist, misogynistic, and homophobic. An article written uh, in, I believe, March of this year, yep, March 20th, goes to say that the Metropolitan Police is broken and rotten, suffering collapsing public trust, and is guilty of institutional racism, misogyny, and homophobia. There was a huge story that happened involving a met police officer and a woman i cannot talk about it because it this video would be taken down but i implore you it is very disgusting go read on it going back um even further a little bit the police federation chair of the united kingdom accepts met is institutionally racist sexist and homophobic here is a clipping of an article via the guardian that i took that was published before this report came out, and it goes on to state, and I quote, the Met has yet to free itself of institutional racism. Public consent is broken. The Met has become unanchored from the Pelian principle of policing by consent set out when it was established. The report found a bullying culture, frontline officers demoralized and feeling let down by their leaders and discrimination baked into the system. It was further revealed that one Muslim officer had bacon stuffed in his boots. A sick officer had his beard cut and minority ethnic officers were much more likely to be disciplined or on leave. That is two of the most disrespectful things you can do. Mm. I am not of that community, but that type of racism, because that's what it is, is sick. No pun intended. I mean, even last year, and this is via Sky News, Two officers sacked over discriminatory messages, including racist joke about Megan. These are the two officers. So now let's lead back into this whole situation involving the Duchess of Sussex. Now I want to make certain that this entire situation isn't specific to Harry and Megan. It involves a slew of other communities, LGBTQ, uh, migrants, et cetera, et cetera. However, because the Duchess of Sussex garners a bigger name, obviously they're going to lead off with her name. The six officers who have retired between 2001 and 2015 and are all in their 60s um, will appear in port, appear in port. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, appear in court on September 7th. <laughs> and at one point in time, they were all part of the Diplomatic Protection Group. And let's talk about what that is. Now, the name has actually changed. It's now referred to as the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection. It is a branch of protection command within the Specialist Operations Directorate of London's Metropolitan Police Department. The branch is responsible for providing officers armed and unarmed to protect the Palace of Westminster, government ministers. It's responsible for security at Downing Street, which is where the prime minister resides. Security for royal weddings, state visits, and other special events. So at some point in time, they will work close or around members of the royal family, which this is very prevalent. You would think with all the reports that have came out regarding the Met Police and its antics, that would show people that Harry and Meghan were telling the truth. A lot of what Harry and Meghan have said that has happened or transpired has came to light, but people refuse to believe it. If this isn't the biggest revelation and truth about their experience or Meghan's experience specifically in the United Kingdom, I don't know what is. And I'm sure people will come into my comments and say, well, the United States police. Well, where do y'all think they learned the racism? <laughs> the difference is we know there's racism prevalent and we try our best to fight it every day. We don't have a stiff upper lip and turn the other cheek when it comes to that. Facts, no printer. The UK has really been painted in a negative light within this last year, if you think about it. And I feel really bad for those in the UK that 
are really actually good people. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, I have met some genuinely great people in the United Kingdom. I personally have never had an issue um, of racism in the United Kingdom, knock on wood, but that's my experience, right? I wonder if Meredith Constant can take this and go deeper. I'm gonna tag her and see. <laughs> As always, comment your thoughts below and thank you so much for watching. Love you guys, bye.